welcome to Study with the Best, the magazine show that's all about CUNY. I'm Tina Beth Pena. New York City is an island of immigrants. Nearly four out of every 10 New Yorkers are foreign born and 140 languages are spoken in the city. On this episode, we'll look at immigrants across the CUNY system. First up, let's look at Citizenship Now, a free law service for New Yorkers looking to become U.S. citizens. Alan Wernick has been helping immigrants become U.S. citizens since he was a student at Loyola Law School. He serves as the director of Citizenship Now and is one of the program's founders. We have the largest by far uh, immigration law service program of any college or university in the country. By helping people along the path to U.S. citizenship, we both strengthen CUNY but also strengthen the city of New York. Citizenship now began in 1994 for members of the CUNY community, but has since expanded to serve all New York City residents. The program does community outreach twice a month and operates six full-time centers across New York City where program participants can get help with immigration issues, take English classes and classes in American history to help them pass the citizenship exam. We have six centers. When I say full-time centers, it means there's at least one attorney, one paralegal, and one community assistant. We also have interns from the CUNY Service Corps participating in our project. Since 2003, Citizenship Now has been teaming up with the Daily News to host a call-in where New York City residents could have their immigration questions answered. The enthusiasm has been growing year after year. There was a lot of question in the beginning, I think, about whether the people would call in and the very first day, the, uh, so many people called in that the Daily News phone system broke down. Now we have 48 phone lines. 24 uh, in English, 24 in Spanish, actually, and then one uh, TTS line. The immigrant community needs to be protected, uh, and they need to know how to get citizenship and how to avoid, from my perspective as the DA, how to avoid people taking advantage of them, promising them, we'll get you a green card or we'll get you documentation if you pay us money, and then it's not delivered. So I applaud CUNY for its outreach to let the immigrant population know how to get documentation, how to get on the road to citizenship. Citizenship Now has found itself a major voice in the national debate surrounding immigration. You want to see New York and our future, just look at all those people there. Every different background, every different probably borough and community and neighborhood. And I really want to salute both City University and the Daily News for taking such strong leadership on this issue. I am certain that more than a few of the 100,000 people that City University and the Daily News have helped, their kids will be on the list of the Forbes 400. Their kids will win Nobel and Pulitzer Prizes. Their kids will be great humanitarians and great leaders and great political leaders as well. More than 97,000 New Yorkers navigating the complex road to citizenship have benefited from the work they are doing here today. I want to thank CUNY and the Daily News for launching this effort and providing such leadership and vision for our city about what it takes to make a difference in this community. Citizenship now counts 2,000 volunteers among its ranks, venturing out into communities across the five boroughs. We saw them at Hostos Community College in the Bronx, helping a number of permanent residents become U.S. citizens. This is all our signature activity, which is a mass application assistance program where we utilize volunteers, staff attorneys. So when they leave here, they should be able to go to the post office, include their check or their fee waiver application, and send it in. They're ready to go. Wernick also writes a column twice weekly for the Daily News. He says it provides a crucial platform for his work with Citizenship Now, reminding hopeful immigrants that there's free help on the road to becoming a U.S. citizen. Any person who qualifies to become a permanent resident can come to Citizenship Now, and we will find a way to help them become a U.S. citizen. Citizenship Now also offers free legal services for undocumented students looking to apply for the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals. Under this program, if a student comes to the United States before they're 16, lives here for five years, and has yet to reach their 31st birthday, then they qualify to remain in the United States, get employment authorization, and a driver's license. Let's hear from the participants themselves. 
Sasha K. Jones came from Jamaica with her mother when she was 15, while Felipe Geraldo came to the United States from Colombia when he was four. The CUNY Citizenship Now role in getting my DACA application was absolutely essential. To know that I could get this application done without having to pay for it, I mean, this is, that was unbelievable. I don't think I would have been able to do it otherwise. It was really the, the hope of some sort of stability in my life. It grants you protection from deportation for two years. You can work, you can apply for a driver's license, um, which is, a, all those things are obviously a big deal. I hope to get my master's in English and to go on being a piano teacher. Education is really my passion. At 15, me and my mom, we came here. This is her. She was um, getting Christmas. This was um, when she was in school at the whole Malfade. She wanted a better life for us, guaranteed. I heard about the, the deferred action for childhood arrivals from a cousin of mine. I was terrified. I said, oh my God, I don't have the thing. There's no I-94 in my passport, and I'm just scared. I'm just going to go back to Jamaica. I fear going back. This is the first card. This is um, the employment card, which is valued for two years. This is the perfect ID, I think. When my mother came here, she wanted to be a nurse so bad. She didn't have nothing as well, but she got to be the home health aide. And she always wanted that for me. I'm going to make it happen. It's going to be in my future. This is actually my mom's seventh memorial since she passed away. And to have this, you know, to been approved, I know she's smiling wherever she is right now. For every immigrant who comes here, there's a success story waiting to be told. Athletes, aspiring policy makers, even super sleuths, they make our country stronger. Give me Inspector Lestrade. Sherlock Holmes calling. So Holmes is finally stumped. First time I've heard him call for help. Call for help, indeed. He's only just beginning his investigation. What does Sherlock Holmes have to do with where I'm standing? At this Forensic Institute, we're about to meet, as the media calls him, modern-day Sherlock Holmes, Dr. Henry Lee. Well, Sherlock Holmes is my hero. Unlike the fictional Sherlock Holmes, Henry Lee is a real-life hero whose work spanning five decades is a landmark in contemporary criminal investigation. Sought by governments all over the world to help find murder clues, Lee has worked on more than 8,000 investigations, including the war crimes cases in former Yugoslavia, the reinvestigation of the Kennedy assassination, and the O.J. Simpson, Lacey Peterson, and John Bonet Ramsey cases. He's made a lasting mark on forensic science in the U.S., but was born in China. I was born a long time ago. Uh, we have 13 brother and sister, um, number 11. Uh, now, of course, that time, China had a civil war broke up, and we have, uh, have to flee to Taiwan. My father passed away uh, on his way to Taiwan, the bow sink. My mother literally raised all 13 kids. So a lot of people ask me who I respect the most. I said my mother. They ask me who I scared the most. I said my mother. His mother instilled strong study and work ethics in him, and at 25 years old, Lee became the youngest police captain in the history of Taiwan. That is when he first came face to face with the challenges of crime solving. In 1960s, in Taiwan, the forensic science field is very primitive. Basically, you run up the usual suspect and hear one confess. If nobody confess, we usually take them to the back room. Five minutes later, seven confessions come out. And uh, of course, we realize a lot of innocent people 
cannot stand of interrogation, make a false confession. Meanwhile, the real criminal got away. That's why I started interested in their, whether or not have a better way to solve the case. A better way of solving cases involved mastering the science of forensics, immigrating to the U.S. and enrolling at a community college, and then in John Jay's College for Criminal Justice gave him the opportunity to pursue the forensic sciences. John Jay made this everything possible for me. After his graduate studies at NYU, Lee embarked on a successful career that included serving as the head of the Connecticut Police Crime Lab a position he held for more than two decades, and as Chief Emeritus for the Connecticut State Police for another 10 years. In the early 90s, together with other field experts, Henry Lee developed the Forensic Science Institute now bearing his name. Here anyone can come and learn what forensic science is all about. It has a national cold case center that's helped solve dozens of reopened cases. It's crime scene labs, give law enforcement officers, detectives, lawyers and judges the expertise for the various crime cases they work on. When I first come to this country, I wish somebody can give me a scholarship. Now this country gave me a chance. It's time for me to pay back to give a lot of students a lot of scholarship. Since its inception, the Henry Lee Institute has trained more than 6,000 practitioners and students from 59 countries. A lot of people give me a lot of credit, say, I push along, make this field become a major foundation for criminal investigation and uh, for our justice system. But in reality, so many good people work together, make that happen. The public attention, make the forensic moving uh, towards what we have today especially those popular TV show, CSI. <music> Meanwhile, they think we like movies, can show up and solve the case. But in reality, it's a team effort to work together. You are the, the modern day Sherlock Holmes. A team member, just uh, one individual. And uh, I only, just like you, like the rest of us, we only have 24 hours. Vianora Vinka, study with the best. Back in 1989, Sandra Schomburger's life changed after the fall of the Berlin Wall. She eventually immigrated to the United States and started a new life, where she reignited her passion for swimming. I always was more comfortable in the water. You swim, you just shut off everything. As a child, it was always something like meditation for me. I had to train a lot long distance, and I tell myself stories in the water. It's like I'm inventing stuff. My head is spinning. I grew up in Berlin. Um, I'm not born in Berlin, but I grew up there. When the wall fell, everything changed. The people changed too. We were all sitting in one boat, and all had the same fate. So we're kind of like connected with each other and we were treating each other a lot like that too. You would help each other out. And after the war fell, that changed. You know, it was more like, like competition. There was no freedom. You can go wherever you liked, you know. My coach just disappeared. So I tried to change the coach and didn't get, didn't get along with the next coach. And then that all caused me to stop swimming. That was a difficult time for me. I kind of like um, lost my way for a while. You know, it's like um, you have been always something special and then not anymore. I had, a, I had not a life as an athlete anymore. That's why I'm enjoying it now. Came over here and started new. Right before the race starts, it's like you have that, that, that energy you know, building up, building up, building up, the more, 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 and, and you need to, it needs to get out. It doesn't matter how demanding that race is or that competition is right now, or I take every race serious, no matter what. I think I'm the born competitor. I always want more of myself, you know. It's not only about the winning, it's improving yourself. 
Sandra not only competes for your college while studying to be a nurse, she also teaches babies how to swim. A lot of kids, when they fight the water, it's not going to work. You need to first relax. It's like making it possible for these little human beings to enjoy in a complete different world. They are much more mobile in the water because they don't have the weight on it. It's just one tenth of their original weight on land. They can make connections in their little brains. Not possible on land. I'm glad to just have the opportunity to show them, show them this world. I love to see them enjoying it or see overcome their fear and going under the dam. And usually in my classes, they're happy to go under. But some of them are really come up smiling. A major obstacle that immigrants face when coming to the U.S. is the language barrier. A program at Queens College has been helping people read, write, and speak English since 1945. I felt like I needed to improve my English before I'm starting my college lessons. I was worried of how I could handle the situation in college, in school, my classes. I came to America um, in June this year. I came to America to improve my English to study in college next semester. The English Language Institute of Queens College is the oldest intensive English program in CUNY. We've grown to an average of about four to five hundred students a semester. The international students are the recent immigrants come to us and they've never been away from their families or they're landing in a new place. So in a way our teachers are like their home away from home. Their classmates are their friends away from home. Most of our teachers have been with us for many, many years. The secret to our success, I believe, are the teachers. And if you don't have a plan, you need to get a plan because very soon when you're studying in the university, you're going to have so many classes and so many responsibilities. The motivation level of uh, ESL students is very high. Many uh, really want to learn and it's, and it's a challenge to keep up with that, motiva their motivation level sometimes. I'm most proud when they're able to get into a college, whether it's in the CUNY system or farther afield, and succeed. It's the, the best compliment to have someone who can study at a foreign university in a foreign language. I think that's a huge accomplishment. Cheese. We're talking about real issues, interject with humor when the students can laugh, when the students can kind of lose themselves in speaking the language. And then often their fluency improves. The English Language Institute actually has two programs. The daytime program is a full-time intensive program and we also have a part-time evening program. I think the goals for the students at the day program, over 50% of them, their intention is to go on to a university. People are studying in the evening group part-time in order to improve their employability at work. Some of them want to learn English so that they can help their children with their homework, speak with their children's teachers. The one thing we face are students that are reticent, perhaps culturally taught to listen more than participate. We have to get them to speak. I came to America three months ago for studying English and maybe some further subject. I'm very uh, interested in business, so I would get to know more about you know, uh, different market, how, how different people act and how different people think. I came here to study and improve my English and um, later on for internships. The classes here is uh, focused more on writing than I used to do in, back in Korea. One of the most rewarding parts of my job is seeing students grow, uh, seeing families reunited, and just knowing that this institute has been here for a long time servicing uh, the local population as well as the international population. One recent immigrant from the Dominican Republic finds herself on the fast track to a promising career in politics. My name is Senator Bello, and I'm the majority leader of the Democratic Party, representing 
District 35. Working hard for me is just like exciting, it's exhilarating, it's thrilling. Nayani is currently a New York City Service Fellow in the Mayor's Office, where she oversees seminar training for Civic Corps members, as well as overseeing two initiatives, language services, and support for our troops. Learning how New York City runs is really interesting because there is a lot of things that affect our government. It is really rewarding because first of all, it's what I like to do. I like to serve people and I'm learning a lot. Uh, I am applying what I learned in the MPA program at John Jay. But being a New York City Service Fellow is just the latest accomplishment for Nayani. She entered the Model Senate program in the spring of 2013, applying through the Edward T. Rogowski Internship Program at the CUNY Graduate Center. Nayani demonstrated a real commitment to community and public service, and she also demonstrated a very, very strong set of leadership skills that we look for when we accept applications to the Model Senate. The bill that I wanted to pass was to raise the minimum wage to $9 an hour, which I know it's a little ambitious, but you know, that's what I wanted and that's what my group was supporting me with. The fact that I was sitting on the chambers at the real senators, New York State Senator's seat, was really rewarding. I felt that I was one of them. One of the great surprises after we selected her to serve as, the, as one of the party conference leaders in the Model Senate program was that she had already begun to build bridges to other members of the Model Senate program, in particular leaders of the opposing political party. This demonstrated to us that there was something very, very special going on here and that in fact she was going to make a great leader, but she was also going to make a great team player. Nayani put these team building skills to good use later on in 2013, landing a spot in the prestigious and highly competitive CUNY Washington DC internship program during the summer. They sent 12 students from New York City to work in, on Capitol Hill and other nonprofit organizations. So I was really lucky to be placed at, on Capitol Hill. So I worked for Congressman Charles Rangels. Working in an actual political office was really thrilling. I worked in two different bills, HIV AIDS bill. When I went to John Jay that I said, I want to be a lawyer and I want to become a politician, a senator, I really didn't know what it was to be a senator or a politician. It involves much more than what I thought it would involve. You are holding the whole nation on your back. Everybody's depending on your decisions. Everything is important. Everything matters. She understands how things work. She understands what the chain of command is in any given situation. And she doesn't overstep her boundaries. She did a program with us in the New York State Senate. She followed that with the most competitive program that we do in Washington. And she's currently working at a very, very high level in New York City government. Neani is a city, state, and nation. Thanks for watching Study with the Best. For more information on what you just saw, log on to our website at cuny.tv or you can Facebook and tweet us. See you next time.